your first con was NC Comic Con, was it? I think that was my very first one. Yeah, that was my very first one. Or it might have been Con Carolinas. Okay. I think that was my first one. It's hard to okay. remember now. But I was just thinking, like, uh, I was at one. Of you, I was at you with one of your first ones. But like, if you if Richmond's your last show, I'm like, oh, I was there too. I was like, that may be. I know. Yeah, but one cool. of the things oh, that's with- interesting. You're like my bookends to my story. <laughs> well, hopefully you're actually a lot, a big part of this next chapter too. <laughs> but uh, like one of the things that at uh, Richmond, uh, you were like ahead of the curve for like awareness of where we were heading. Mm. Like as society with uh, the coronavirus, with everything else, like, I remember like you at your booth and even at my booth just walking around, you were talking about, uh, y'all need to understand the world's about to shut down. Y'all, yeah. <laughs> you, I, know, I was like, you guys get ready. You, you were telling us like, uh, okay, so that was February 28th or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, you were a full three weeks <laughs> ahead of mainstream America <laughs> in terms just of saying, <laughs> yeah, but like you, you literally look like, a rorschach the end is nigh type situation where you're That's like awesome. we're, we're at like a uh warm fuzzy happy comic-con surrounded by people and you're like hey y'all world's about to shut down and, and but here please enter my big birthday giveaway <laughs> make it better and that was the thing i was just like you know the like literally once we got to like March 10th, I was, I was at a con on March 13th, which was like the day everything and its mama shut down. Yeah. Um, uh, like I was sitting at my booth in Florence, South Carolina, when like our church leaders are like, are we having church tomorrow? What are we doing? Like, yeah. then, like I was sitting there and I'm like, Jackie was right. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like the whole time. And so like every time I watched us take steps in this like societal direction, I'm like, Look at Jackie ahead of the curve. Um, and I usually want to say so much more, but I realize that I come off so so dark. And I'm like, there are a lot of people watching me for the fun. I mean, all my messages are like happy. They like the fun. So I try to just put that on the internet and not put the doomsayer stuff because me and my pop, we can get in there going for hours about how it's the end of the world. I realize that probably not the end of the world, but again, I, you know, I like to look at the macro thing and I'm looking at a lot more than just our elections and the virus. I'm looking at our global scale of what's going on and what we look like. So and that's one of the things I've always admired about you is that you, one, you're perceptive and you are vocal. You may not like campaign about your, what you see on the internet, but you are paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. And uh, you're a very aware person. Um, just not just of yourself, but uh, of the world at large. And one of the things that I've seen with uh, social media, because I am a social media person and I can easily... But you use it for good and I love that. I, su- I fully support it. <laughs> and, but that's one of the things, just even like uh, messing around with TikTok. Um, like one of the things that I've seen so crazily is that um, I think we're uh, conditioning ourselves to not be able to listen to each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, that if with TikTok, you literally have 15 seconds to a minute mm-hmm. to get someone's attention, keep it, garner a response, and earn validation. Yeah. And um, like it, I see that there are people that use that platform to be a positive voice, to be encouraging, to be uplifting, but none of that has the success of doing silly things and you know, basically, uh, mining for, uh, approval. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like one of the, th- one of the people, and I don't say this in any negative fac- facet, just like watching the story. Cause I like people's stories. I like watching people's stories and me too. I miss TikTok so much. Oh, I heard about thriller, but I haven't, yeah. I haven't watched it yet. I think it's thriller, uh, thriller, thriller. Sorry. But like uh, one of the stories I've been following is uh, Mr. Hamilton. If you're familiar with him, I don't know. But uh, okay. So short version of his story. He was a teacher in Florida. Mm-hmm. He's a giant goofball. Um, he's mm-hmm. basically a ginger me, but with less filter. Oh, okay. Um, and so during the pandemic, he started like right out the gate, just doing silly videos, dance and stuff like that. 
Um, he's turned into a full monetized celebrity to where wow. he's left teaching. Um, uh, and he's got like Wayne Brady doing dances with him online and um, Sponge, wow. like Nickelodeon and SpongeBob officially partnered with him recently and all these things. And it's just wow. like, you see this one guy do this and now I feel like you, we've got a whole generation to say, well, that's what I need to do. It's like, mm-hmm. and where it's like, if, if it stops being you expressing yourself or finding a release or just using your voice and it starts being, this is what I have to be to be valid. Yeah. That's just, that's just dangerous. Yeah. Um, and, and the, and also um, something that just to add on to that, when you become a billboard, for other brands, and this is this is a very divided topic because as artists, struggling artists, that that's that's a, that's a thing for a reason. They need money. They want to monetize their art form. They really do. And th- th- I struggle with this. I have ideas written down specifically for our community that if I could find a team that had the wherewithal, I would provide a platform for work for all of us. I, I've already had team meetings about it. You just you'd be shocked how hard it is to find people that actually have the work ethic and the wherewithal to follow, to, to truly begin something and do the work to create it. It's, I don't know why it's so challenging, but it is. Um, so the thing is, I don't discourage people from affiliates and, 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 and working with companies, but I do try to tell people, please look into the companies you work for, you know, I put a little bit of effort into, uh, and gosh, it's, it, this just sounds so privileged. I feel so bad even saying it because the truth is people are struggling so bad. They need the money, sell out everywhere you can, take it. My Nana told me the other day, I just changed my stance just now because I mean, because I, I can't tell you not to take the money because it's wrong. My Nana said, take the money from the heathens and do good. That's what she told me to tell y'all. <laughs> That's the truth. But the problem, and she said, Daniel goes in, was in the, sent into the lion's den by God. And uh, you even told me my, you know, you even told me spread the, you know, use it for good. You spread the word. So here's the thing. If you can, try to begin to show the world only good companies and and not work for bad companies. But until you get there, do what you can to survive. But I think in a general, as a general mindset, we're, we're in danger of pushing this billboard monetize your life kind of a career on young people. And uh, a lot of them are going to fail a lot. We're we're setting up a ton of young people for failure that are investing in this uh, image they see online, which isn't that lucrative anyway. And, And they're lying like, man, I, I read an article from someone in our community that is just such BS y'all about how much money they make because I, I could tell you a, a drama story, which I would never, I don't do that y'all. I don't gossip. I don't believe in it. And uh, people are like, Oh yeah, whatever. Of course you do. Find one person you can gossip to. And that's my Nana. And then tell them everything. Talk to them about everything because they're your counsel, but don't gossip. Gossip's dangerous. So I will say though, don't believe everything you read. Just don't. Don't believe that when you see someone being so successful um, in a way that you think isn't the normal, like the mainstream um, model way, if you see somebody that's like, you're like, oh, they're so successful, they may not be. We're we're living in this like um, perception is everything kind of reality. And we have to make sure that we're giving kids the, the tools to perceive what's 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 what they think that career looks like and what it takes to get there but also know all about the behind the scenes we need more transparency and more truth speaking about how hard it is to monetize yourself in this community or in this world or online so i just think um it's not necessarily like i don't want to discourage people and tell them bad shame on you don't amazon affiliate link they're the devil i what what instead i want to do is just have everybody talk more about you know, what we're doing and why we're having to do it and maybe figure out a different kind of way to monetize ourselves that we own and we run as a society. So I think the socioeconomical platform that is, or, you know, career path that is on all these platforms, we haven't figured out how to make it our own yet. We're paying 50% to Patreon. Dude, that makes me want to fight Patreon, fight them hard, dude. Yeah. If you want to take 50%, you could take 30 in my opinion, I think they should only take 30. I don't understand why they take 50. I, don't need, I didn't know they took 50. Oh, I thought they took 50, dude. I thought I read that. Oh, I don't know. Or don't, doesn't Patreon take 50? Twitch, oh, Twitch takes 50. Okay. Twitch I was like. 50. Somebody correct me on that, please. Because look, y'all, I don't want to be given ba- um, bad information. That's terrible, actually. And I'm, I'm uninformed on Patreon because I had it for a while and got rid of it really fast. Um, because I realized that that doesn't work for me other, either. I kept trying to find my structure, but I just still not. I can't take money from people like that. I just can't. It's fine that 
you know, that's a career for some people because they want to, you know, there's a lot of people that have expendable income, but I kept meeting thousands of people across this country that did not have expendable income and they were subscribed to 10, 15 people paying those $5 a month subscriptions and struggling IRL. What? That should be discouraged. We shouldn't, you know, it's a weird thing that's going on here. There's a lot of uh, good and bad all around and how do we navigate it? Well, th that's with a, uh, when, so I've only to the point where I'm at in Comic-Con life, ministry, all this stuff. I'm only to the point where, uh, because one of, one of the struggles with me is like, if you bring me into anything, you have to be comfortable with the Jesus label because yep. you, you can't get past that where I'm at. Like there's not a presentation of me that's going to be socially acceptable. So like it hasn't been that often that uh, a con will bring me in as a guest because of the label. I had more people bring me in as a guest for screenwriting for clever movies and screen junkies mm -hmm. um, than ever for faith and fandom. I, believe um, that. I was on swamp thing for literally 18 seconds and what? I got, yeah, I'm on That's the, awesome. yeah, I'm on the swamp thing TV show, like episode four, for, but like literally for like 18 seconds. Um, That's I, cute. I love that. And so I got a guest spot for my 18 seconds of swamp thing, but like not for any of my <laughs> other stuff. And it's like, okay. Um, yeah, I'm right up there with the walking dead zombie cast. Um, awesome. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but some celebrities did cameos as the walking dead zombies. So that's yes. funny. <laughs> but, uh, one of the things is that, uh, I've, I'm at the place where when it comes to actually being a guest or stuff like that, I, I still pay out a lot of table fees and stuff for that. So like, uh, when the world shut down, uh, I had already paid probably close to $2,000 in table fees for upcoming shows. Oh yeah. Wow. Table fees are so expensive. They and really so, are. And because nobody knows what the world looks like, um, like none of the cons have refunded money. Oh, wow. Um, so I've got $2,000 in table fees. Tied up to a con that you don't even know if it'll, you know, come back. Yeah, Cause they're like, oh, we'll just, we'll just move the money over to the next one. And I'm like, okay, this is bad. <laughs> so, yeah. um, like when that happened, like somebody was like, you should start a Patreon. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And then like, literally I had someone like yell in my inbox, like do it. And, um, so I started a Patreon and like one of the weirdest things is like, I have no idea what to give people or to do, or like, why are you here? And That's, I felt the same way. I felt this obligation to give them content, but honestly you do a lot of stuff. So like they could just support your general initiative, you know, but, like Vincent makes stickers and sends his people print. And I'm like, like basically if, if I'm a writer, like I'm sending you a text message, is that, is that, is that a thing? Like, do you want a, an encouraging text? But like, that's like when people actually want an encouraging to... text is actually a pretty cool idea honestly <laughs> i kind of like that well yeah yeah but it's like I, if you're paying for a text it's weird um i know but that's a whole system have you seen the celebrities that are like hey want to join my club they promote it on freaking twitter man it's, it was on tiktok for a while y'all look into it it's a real system it's a website that allows celebrities you sign up for their vip club and you get miscellaneous texts from them it's just a data collection thing y'all it's so dirty <laughs> but what if, but that's the hard thing is like we, I don't think we as a society have determined how to support without uh, idolizing or to support without monetizing. It's just the thing of like, because like when you did your Patreon, I supported you with oh, that. Yeah. And, and but that's like, I didn't care what you did. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. And there's a lot of people that have Patreons where they don't send anything. I think Svetlana is movies. I think it's just for support. Yeah. And then maybe you get like some private, maybe you get patterns or something. I'm not sure. Everyone should have patterns out there though. If you're a cosplayer, but, I tell people all the time, make patterns. <laughs> so. Well, and that's every time I'm in Hobby Lobby, that's my thing is to find your simplicity pattern and prop it up front. Dude, I um, love that. And I'm but, not a gatekeeper. I've everybody that's ever asked me about pattern making. I send them to Bill Duran's Inkscape tutorial. I bought for $5. See, be transparent about everything. Help other people they reach out to me there i bought cosplaypatterns.com last year in an effort to i actually was going to work out royalty deals with everyone in my community i have a grand plan where i wanted everyone's patterns on my thing so i could run marketing and crush it get sophie who i love um oh my sophie and, and get her on the team to promote it i had a grand dream of how i would just 
figure out a way for everybody to, you know, sell their patterns and normalize them. Cause my patterns are next level. I don't know if you guys have seen my, if you haven't seen my newest patterns, my ability, like I'm just really good at the logistics, the pattern, uh, making sure that it's super, it's, it's beginner friendly. I, I, it's okay to talk about this. Like I hate bragging about myself for my patterns. I'm, ahead, flick, I'm a nerd. I'm a math geometry nerd. So I really like this. And, um, I've bought some from other people and I'm like, Oh gosh, they're not green. They print terribly too many pages spread out. They don't have markers to tape them. They don't have all these different things. They're cool people and they're making great content. That's clearly not their favorite part. They don't want to normalize the patterns into this, like, you know, everybody has their skill set. So I think that the best thing we could do as a community is stop letting everyone else exploit us as cosplayers. These pattern companies exploit us, all these things exploit us, and they use us for nothing. We have to create our own storefronts. Like a, an example of cosplay patterns would be everyone's patterns they're sold, little stories about everyone. It's just a, it's a better idea to be our own big box because they're going to big box us up. They're, they're trying to already, you know, I've, I, um, I won't tell Svetlana's story, obviously, because it's private, but I talked to her about two months ago. Um, she talked to me about a business deal here in America. And, she, and I was like, that's what they want. That's what they think you're worth. And she has a very high price because she, look at her. She crushes it. She's a phenomenal teacher. She makes wonderful products. And I thought that it wasn't fair. I was like, I know what this company's making off of you. I think this is ridiculous. And uh, she didn't go forward with the deal. Because like Harrison told me years ago from Vulpin Props, we got to set precedents and we do. But again, it feels like that privilege thing, you know, of, oh, well, we can while your bank's got extra backup money. But those of us that are privileged, again, maybe it is our duty to begin to build the things that can benefit those that need to find the ways to monetize themselves, like you're saying, without it being the idolic thing. When it's all of us together and it's a raise all boats, it's not one celebrity standout. It's a better way of doing things, but I just don't know how to get people on board. <laughs> you know, that's the thing in life. One day, maybe, but for now, I'm with you that I think it's a, the, the solo monetize your own self really does breed that narcissistic um, kind of um, idolic thing. And then they're lonely. They don't have a support team that they can tell is truly there for the right reasons. Maybe, you know, there's all these factors that come into it that just make that solo path not as fun. And not as like life fulfilling. One of the, and one of the things I love about what you do and how you do it is that the fact that, as you talked about with your cosplay stuff and you know your whole, you, how many times you've been just said raise all boats. You've always been a promoter of other people. You've mm -hmm. always, I've, I'm one of the, I'm one of your critics on like the level of uh you need to promote yourself more. Like like <laughs> I, I've been that I've been that person like looking at you. I'm like dude you've done this and this and this and this and this and like, why isn't this this? And like, I'm like, because you're really accomplished. And like, even in the stuff you've talked about, you haven't tooted all your horns. Yeah. Um, but like, one of the things is like, oh, you could promote yourself so well with these. And, you know, but on the flip side, you promote other people with such sincerity and heart yeah. that uh, it's a big deal that, if I think if we get to the point where we have can build teams of people who lift each other up, it makes a big difference. Um, I often end up doing a lot of things by myself because I don't ask for help. Yeah, um, I can relate to that. Um, I'm, I'm a lot more, I will push you. I will support you. I will show up and do all the things for you, but I'm not going to ask you to help me. Yeah. Um, and you've done that for me. You've reached out to me and offered all these things and pushed and made me connect. You've given me connections. You do that, you know, for me too. You're right. But you never ask for help. And I, I think one of the biggest things we could do if we're, if we're supporters and we're encouragers and we're the people that want to raise all boats. Um, sometimes I think we have to actually ask people to help us raise our own boats. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> So. You're right. It is. It's hard to, if you're not, you and I are so similar in that way. If you're not someone who's good at asking for help, I don't know how to break the cycle. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to tell you. I don't either. I'm just cycle. I'm like, Hey, that would be great if we did this, but I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't have it either. Um, There's that joke about um, uh, being the one that finishes all the school projects. Yeah. Duh. Like, what do you mean? I was going to let somebody else do the project. Like I thought that they wanted me to do the project <laughs> and you're probably the same way. It's like, I'm here. I am learning app development completely on my own. Now asking a few friends, my friend, Mark Murphy, and now my friend, Mike, um, and my friend, Rusul and the eggs have been wonderful. Courtney Holmes is amazing. I've got a lot of friends that give me consults, 
you know, and, and counsel, seek counsel. The Bible said, the more counsel I have sought through my career, the better my career has become. And the more rewarding, the more monetarily even. It's weird. It's like, and once I got out of my own head, and so I guess I do ask for help in that regard. I started to the last, the last two years. I broke the cycle of, um, it was me, 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 me. And I couldn't get anybody. I didn't want anybody else's input on anything, actually, which is terribly stubborn and arrogant. And I'm saying it out loud. It's kind of gross. Um, but the last two years, I was like, wait a minute. I need everyone's input because friends started giving it freely that I trusted and respected. And uh, so now I seek it out. I'm like, hey, can we have a meeting? I'd love to just have 30 minutes of your time or an hour. And I will gladly return the favor. And I do. If someone comes to me for a favor, it's yours. If, especially if you've given me a favor, that's ridiculous. Of course, I'm going to take some time out of my day and repay you for your kindness. And I think um, seeking counsel has changed my life for the better. So I guess I am getting a little bit better, but I, uh, I, I have a hard time asking people to actually work, like do real what I know is going to be hard work, especially if it's not going to be paid for a while. I just can't. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how to break that. <laughs> if anyone has advice, please tell us. So uh, just because I know we've been here a while, and I don't want to take your whole day, but uh, just to ask yeah. you this, um, over the last, you know, since we've talked with your airport, yeah. I spill water all over myself all the time. <laughs> like just even since your airport journey, like, uh, and you know, the things that we've talked about already, but uh, you've plugged in a lot more to your church community in the last bit. And um, just like, what's your, uh, what's been kind of like your, spiritual trajectory of like where you've been at in a while gosh so i i, I go to church every sunday with nana because my nana loves church and uh it's my whole family's been to this church since the beginning my family are some of the original founders of that church so uh it's we're just really rooted here we've been here for a long time so i just feel like my front doors that door right there are from the church i got a chair that's 110 years old from the church the church just feels this like super almost like you know, woven into the fabric of my family. So I, uh, it was natural for me in a crisis to just go back to church. I was like, oh, I need church. Like, God help me. Um, so it, it provides that wonderful, like support, just being around those people and everybody talks to you in church and they're friendly. Um, and, uh, so I wasn't, I kept going to church and prayed and I was like, God, what do I do? Like, do you want me to do something in the church? My dad's a pastor. My gammy was the pastor. My gammy Brooks was a uh, evangelical holy roller, spoken tongues. And I know the atheist listener are like, Oh, there she is. There's the crazy look y'all. It was weird. I did go to a tent revival with snakes around their hands. I saw the, you know, knocking them out and falling. Nope. I saw that nope. as a 12 year old. <laughs> so I've seen the most extreme version of, you know, um, evangelism, but I saw the good. I saw how much they did for the community. Churches crush it, dude. Sixty thousand uh, dollars this last year. My church gave to scholarships to the kids in the church. That that's wonderful. They're doing a great job, um, and they're they're transparent. The budgets are always out there. There's no corruption that you can see in the churches around here. They're all really transparent. But I understand why people are reluctant to go to one. Organized religion scares people. But I um when I start going back, my pastor, it just felt like everything he was saying was directly to me which is, you know, of course it is. And then I went to see my dad. I went to my dad's church and, and listened to him. And it was just back to back of all these things that felt like God was talking to me. And um, it was all these things like, be still, be still. I kept trying to, for the first like four months, I know a lot of you guys listening that if your industry shut down, you're like, what do I do? I was just grasping at straws, trying to find a job. I was like, do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? Um, create a job for myself, not find one locally. Cause obviously the virus, but um, I, uh, I just, and then other people would say, be, be still. I know a mentor who has been invaluable in my life, uh, a wonderful mentor that God put in my life, definitely, um, told me, be still. And then somebody put a giant sign up going into my town that says, be still for I am God. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I'll stop <laughs> trying to create a job for myself. And I did. And just like that, God started putting things in my life that were heading me towards a different direction. I, um, I, you know, I had all these ideas and my town started taking interest and people around here started talking about me. I'm not a bragger as you guys can, as you know, you're talking about bad at showing myself. My Nana tells people, she's like, she's so brag. She's so bad at bragging. Tell them, tell them what you do. Tell, tell them what you do. They're going to want to hear it. And I'm like, I don't know how to say it. I have to learn how to talk about what I've done. It's just this childish that I can't get over that. So I'm learning. And people around here are like, wait a minute, you live here and you did all those things? Like, let's use you, you know, in a nice way. They're like, events committee and, and what kind of ideas do you have for this? And um, 
I have people talking to me about education outreach programs and how they're willing to volunteer. I got people saying, I'll be your first volunteer. What? Dude, that's weird when people, you don't even have anything set up and they're telling you to volunteer. So I started realizing like God, something is being curated for me. God's opening a door. And the weirdest part is earlier this year, my house has been a nightmare. I've got $85,000 into this home already. It has been a true disappointment of my life. Um, but I've, I'm happy. I don't know how and why. I mean, I cry a little bit when they rip up the floors and stuff, but I, um, I'm handling what would be a major life setback in a really positive way um, because God is showing me grace. He's showing me his prevailing grace, as I say, all through these, these things. It's like, this could be breaking me down, but he's like, hold on, honey, something's coming. Just keep that faith forward. If you were, I always tell people like from a video game perspective, if you were the creator of a world, you were the, the God that you created of the world and uh, you made humans in your image and you gave them free will. You're like, oh, all right, I'm gonna give you free will and see if you like me still. Like, are you gonna love me? I'm not gonna be present in your life. I'm gonna be here in this way. I'm gonna be with you in spirit. I'm not gonna give you the, the luxury and the easy convenience of showing you that I'm your father every day in your face. Here I am. You must come to me. I'm going to be in spirit. I'm going to really test you as my, my children. And uh, imagine that creator. And uh, all through the years, he, he's like, all right, I give you this Bible. I spoke to you. I loved you so much during this time that I spoke to you. And I gave those of you my written words so that you had a guide. And uh, you just ran away from it at every time. And, and the Greeks, I mean, I, I love history. The Greeks stopped worshiping on Sunday and had fights in the Colosseum. I mean, every, you know, they worshiped um, gods. The priests began to also participate. Every time that God, you know, in his text, he's like, y'all, what are you doing? I'm your father. I love you. I'm telling you, if you have faith in me and you believe in me, I will bless you on this earth I've created for you. Of course I will, because I created you. If I was the video game simulator, you're my favorite people. I want you to succeed. I want you to crush it down there. I want you to flourish and be happy and take care of each other and live that ideal world. Of course he does. But we, we just, uh, because of free will and because for the battle of our soul that is occurring, he's constantly uh, having, to having to forgive us over and over. And we're just like beat up his opinion of us for all these years. And it's like, uh, even right now, look at us. We're, I'm going to say it. And people are like, no way. It's, we are worse than ever. We're worse than ever by a thousand fold. We've never been this bad. Sodom and Gomorrah, not this bad. The Greeks, not this bad. Technology. God gave us free will and the ability to use our wonderful brains that he's letting evolve into this high intellect. Our society is getting smarter and smarter. There's no doubt. A, a, huge, a huge portion, obviously, there's ignorance. Ignorance is not stupidity, to be clear. There's tons of ignorance in our society. Plenty of people that if we could educate them, they would be smart too. Humans are smarter. But what we're doing is we're tearing down our father even more. We're like, ah, we're so smart. Look at us. We're going to go to Mars. We know how to make electric cars. We're going to harvest RF, uh, RF um, uh, technology and we're going to have our own tesseracts and wireless power. We're going to be geniuses. Look at us. We're so smart. How could a biblical creator have anything to do with this? This is man in his ever, you know, ever uh, prevailing brilliance. Arrogance. Of course, arrogance will be our downfall. Of course, pride will be our downfall. What we are doing is instead giving ourselves credit for so much when it is so obvious to me that someone made us. It makes no sense. Like, I understand the evolution thing, but even still then, I think that's God. If you believe in evolution, that's God too. The Bible is vague in the beginning for a reason. God's not going to tell us all of his secrets because he, he wants to see exactly how much we trust him and how, exactly how much we believe in him. We're tested even in the biblical text. We're tested. He's up there right now. Like, you know, I'm not going to give them every guideline. Why won't they um, try on their own? You know, that whole thing that says God helps those who help themselves. That's not in the Bible though. We got a lot of humanisms we put around Christianity, but it's still applicable in a concept. Why aren't we, you know, we help ourselves by helping ourselves to a portion of faith. That's what we need to be helping ourselves to. You know, it's not helping ourselves through works and, and redeeming ourselves. We have to try to think, even if you can't, even if religion is just uh, disgusting to you, try to think outside the box for a second. Think, all right, like if this was created by a person, like what are all, would it make sense that all the suffering was in the world and all these things were going wrong? Yeah, it would. Because as a society, we are dramatically failing at being, um, you know, being faithful to him. So I, I look at things like that. Um, I, I tangent it, sorry. I get really passion, passionate. But I, um, I'm going to remain faithful and hope that, I, that God will find a way for me to create 
jobs for people and raise all boats. And uh, my next chapter is going to look a lot like local. It's going to look a lot like being right here and not traveling. I'm not going to go to conventions. Um, Kamui, for example, said that she wasn't going to fly anymore because it's not green. There's a whole lot about cosplay that is the least green profession out there. You guys know that that foam going in those landfills, sorry, dudes, it's going to be there for a long time. So that's fine and all, but we also, as a society, probably need to figure out what to do with all of it. Maybe that's on us. You know, at the end of the day, green, 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 I'm protesting and I'm rioting for a green society. So much starts from within. So much starts with just us. Instead of us wasting one single moment uh, talking about it online, be about it. You know, um, so I think that, I think that uh, my next chapter is just going to be trying to figure out the mess that is my life and how to live the most like uh, non um a uh, hypocritical life I can. Someone called me out on social media recently and we had a wonderful discussion. I would read it to you, but it's private. But the girl was like, this is the best response I've ever gotten from anyone. I respect you so much more. Um, she called me, a, she was like, isn't that a little hypocritical? And I was like, girlfriend, I am hypocritical every single day. I'm talking to you on an iPhone right now being hypocritical because I do not believe in the way they're created. Of course I don't. Or the minds that they get the stuff out of. You know, but how do we, we have to, we, we can call ourselves hypocrites. We can dog on ourselves, but at some point we have to begin to try to change it. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to do in my, my downtime at home while, while navigating the next chapter. So I have a lot, I think we as a society, myself included, have a lot to work on, but I'm hoping to find a job here that I, uh, that can create something cool for me and my friends can come visit and my, my artists and creators maybe will have opportunities to work for and things. So I don't know. I think we all have to do a little bit of self-searching or whatever, you know, what are you going to do in your next chapter? I don't know. Actually, my wife and I were uh, just talking about that. Cause uh, well, one of the things with, uh, so I was pretty burnt out after last year. Mm. Um, last year was the best year for faith and fandom air quotes on paper. Like, yeah. Um, the most conventions, the most success, um, the most notoriety, like the most books sold, you know, like literally like on paper, it was dope. Um, and I was a burnt out hollow shell of a human being by the end of it. Um, because my pastoral life was struggling, um, because I was distracted. I'll say that. Yeah. But, uh, also, even when I wasn't distracted, I was uh, burnt from the amount of strain I was putting on myself. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, it's one of those things, whole private conversations, trying to say it appropriately. Um, I, uh, I snapped at someone uh, that I was angry with. Uh, and I'm not normally a angry, snappy person. Um, mm -hmm. I'm generally cuddly. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not my motif to be aggressive. And, um, I lost my temper with somebody in the middle of the summer and, um, of 2019. And, uh, like, I think the month of July, I was home six days. Mm. I was on the wow. road that much. And, uh, you know, I'm getting to the, I was getting to the point where, you know, as you mentioned, my girls are growing and they're becoming their own little people. And, um, I just like, I was so burned out by 2019 that, uh, I had already, uh, for faith and fame to book seven, I had already written like this five page I'm out, uh, speech. And, um, I was like, look, this was great. Um, this season's done. I can't keep doing this. I'm so tired. Um, like wow. I'm not going to be a person. So I had written this, the intro to book seven was, this was cool. I'm gonna finish 2020 strong. And then I'm out. And wow. So I had written this like five page thing, like uh, I brought our editor into it. I brought our art or Vincent into it. And I, I was like, I'm done. Enjoy this book. Peace out. And um, like, then I said, I'm going to finish every con I can in 2020. And then uh, come 2021, I'm going to convert it over to like a, a website where I just do, uh, I'll release a chapter or whatever uh as a blog whenever i do it i'll put you in resources to other m nerdy ministries and things like that but uh and uh, i was going to basically hunker down and then yeah. um and then you know after richmond uh 
everything shut down. And then all of a sudden I had like five straight months of like, I'm home with my kids every day and uh, I'm not traveling anywhere. I haven't, I haven't traveled more than 70 miles uh, for a con since then. There's only been two cons since yeah. Richmond and um, they were both in Florence and uh, oh which is gosh. only 70 miles from me and then yeah. less. And then um, I'm going to a yard sale style con tomorrow. Well, that's, um, that's fun though. Yeah, there, a yard sale con. Um, there's a, it's in Lexington, North Carolina. They're actually using an abandoned movie theater parking lot. Smart. That's and smart. so we're all outside doing that. But like, so I've every, for every reason I listed in the intro of book seven of why I'm out has been resolved. And so I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Well, like, I guess I was like, maybe I mean, I got maybe God's every- not done with you. Maybe he wants you in this, in this arena for a reason. Yeah. And that, that's literally like, I literally, when we got down to the point of uh, publishing book seven, I'm like, well, I guess I better delete this. So I deleted the whole, <laughs> I deleted the whole I'm out. And like, it literally the intro is like, I had something else playing, but I don't know what to tell you right now. Enjoy the book. Um, but uh, I, I don't know what the next season is, um, but I know that I need to be, more like so I've, I've always one of the big epiphanies for my life spiritually relationally all the things was that there's a big difference between faithfulness and loyalty mm-hmm. um loyalty is showing up out of obligation and commitment mm. faithfulness is showing up and actually giving all of yourself as you promised yeah and um i you know that's like there are a lot of marriages that are loyal mm-hmm. but they're not faithful um because like they're not giving what they've actually vowed to give and yeah. for me i want to not just be loyal to mm-hmm. the commitments i've made i actually want to be faithful i want to be uh i don't want to ever look at my actual pastoral job as the uh nine to five i do to support what i love like yeah oh good point yeah yeah I, and so i actually want to be better there i want to be involved in my kids stuff i want to be because I'm a I'm I'm involved in my kids' life. There's never been yeah, a question. Yeah, there's no that. doubt that you are. Yeah. But like I I don't want there to be a I don't want there to be a point where they question that or feel isolated. And uh, my wife's had a lot of physical issues health wise, and um you know we don't really publicize a lot with that. But like she she needs me more just physically mm-hmm. around. And so whatever happens, I want to be more faithful. But like we were straight up talking about like you know, let's, let's sell our house, move and start over somewhere. And, um, or (laughs) we have, uh, three days at Hatteras at a resort at that, like at the campground on Hatteras that Mm -hmm. we have to come to at some point this year. Well, Um, well, I definitely want to see you when you come. Okay. Um, so, you know, it it might be our sales pitch for when we like, no, man, if I had a, if, if God provided me with a team here, I, it would change me and the team's life. I feel it. I, I I know it so concretely. It's bizarre. Like I know it. Like I say it all the time to everyone. I'm like, look, I got a, ten people I pitch constantly to to move here, and they all live on the west coast or the middle or Raleigh. A lot of them live like Raleigh or you know your area because it's like, dude, you can do anything. Work from home here, and this place is good for the mind. So, but that's one of the things is that we've we've struggled with is that we don't have team. Yeah. Um, uh, as you know as a pastor more often than not you're usually the support base but mm-hmm. never part of the team yeah yeah because you're like you the boss you, you're the boss or if, if you're the you know even more just on the coach like oh coach co- that's a better example yeah the coach the coach isn't on the team the coach mm-hmm. is on the sidelines while the team does their thing and that's like and you know da- danielle by proxy had you know gets that whole even if even if she makes like friends she's still the pastor's wife yeah or you know like you know she's had a lot of like uptick in the medical community because you know she teaches the collegiate program for respiratory therapy Um, oh wow that's cool um, and so like six months ago nobody knew what a respiratory therapist was oh yeah now she's like a leading expert (laughs) now like exactly now she's like ooh 
respiratory like now she's fancy so yeah. um the world we all want to know so much about the respiratory tract <laughs> and so like and that's this thing of like uh we're, we're at the stage where um you know i i legit don't have an idea i i just know that uh i know that i want to be more faithful in what we're doing and um i wonder if there's something you could do together that's that's what we're 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 working towards we're just trying to figure that out because you know, that's, I think, one of the things in our our life, because we're both givers, or we're both, like, we export ourselves a lot, mm-hmm. is that, um, like, I don't know that we have much left of ourselves, and from what we give beyond that, so, like, we, we both have a lot of anchor in um, our identity is in parents, or our, our identity mm-hmm. is in our our export is whether it's the books or the church or the collegiate thing or so it's uh, I think we're just trying to find ourselves and be faithful where we're at with us I think that's kind of our next chapter um maybe it's your turn to be still (laughs) right um it's so hard though it's like you get you kind of get like oh why is nothing making it you know like what's next You, you get so impatient we're very impatient as a species unbelievably so I think well, and that's one of the things that I, I think we truly struggle with. And like one of my favorite like illustrations biblically is that uh, uh, when Jesus was taking a nap in the boat and like the storm comes through, mm-hmm. um, the disciples like spent Freak time. Out. <laughs> the disciples spent time trying to fix the problem themselves mm-hmm. when Jesus was right there. Mm-hmm. like they didn't wake jesus up until they were dying yeah like, like, what? help us dudes like it, it literally could have been like uh hey um there's a cloud in the distance mm-hmm. <laughs> we're concerned it could have been like hey it's starting to rain or you know it's like literally okay we've literally burned ourselves out to the point where at death please help yeah. um where being still might be like just say hey that that's an issue um yeah <laughs> Yeah, it says be still for uh, for I am God. Isn't that right? What it says? Yeah, be still and know I am God. And yeah, yeah I, and the, that the, probably says, "Hey, turn to me. I am God." Remember, you know. Well, like the second half of that verse actually says, "Like uh, I will be exalted above all things. I will be exalted above all." It's like I think it's Psalm forty six ten. Um, but like just literally, you know, we, we we say that part like of be still and know that I am God. But literally, the second half, yeah, of, of the same verse says, "I will get this lifted up." Um, and so like, you know, we, we kind of like forget that part of like, if we just be still, he will get it handled. It's not just about us having that reassurance, but us also having the assurance that he has this within his capabilities and will do something about it. Yeah. So, and I think a lot of that, the, what's missed with a lot of Christians, uh, or people that are like, I never feel God's blessings or whatever, you know? Uh, how often are you really humbling yourself before your, your creator? You know, that's the thing. It's I, I get down on my knees and pray. I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm not ashamed to say I get fully down on my knees and pray fully down. I humble myself, humble myself completely because what, well, who am I to not humble myself? I don't look at it as something that's, uh, that I have to rationalize like, oh, well, why would I humble my, you know, this is kind of weird. It's not weird. It feels completely organic and natural. So I think um, a lot of people aren't, maybe aren't seeing God in their life that much because they aren't really talking to him as much as they think they are. It's easy for six years, putting so much time into my career. I neglected God dramatically. I'm lucky and blessed that he gave me all that he gave me. And I still return to my faith. I could have gone a completely another way, you know? And I think that I now humble myself more than ever because I saw he didn't give up. He clearly didn't. He kept pulling like, Hey, I see the devil's fighting for your soul. And by the devil, I mean the entertainment industry, if I'm just being real, (laughs) because I don't, I'm not a fan. Um, I felt the pull. I felt the pull. I really did the true pull. And I think that humbling myself made it come, made the, the scope of God's attention to me greater. And I don't want to say that. I think that's okay to say, you know, sometimes people are like, uh, you're, tr- you're interpreting the Bible. I just know what I felt. And what I felt is that when I humbled myself before my creator, it, it amplified his, his presence in my life. And so I think that a lot of us are, um, just not really fully immersed yet. And it's okay to say that out loud. It's be like, dude, I'm kind of like a fair weather Christian. Like, try it. 
I tell my atheist friends, I'm like, give it a try. Just do it for, as in, don't do it because you're a Christian. Do it as an experiment to me. And if you come back six months and you're like, girl, I've been praying to your God for six months. I have broken my ankle. My bike is on fire. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> just nonsense. <laughs> like, well, just that, give, um, give me the feedback. Cause I would love that. Cause it, it really. The guy who runs a uh, satellite gaming, the whole gaming ministry we talked about earlier. Um, one of the things that they do is they don't require you to be a Christian to be on their gaming teams. Yeah. And they say that uh, one of the things that uh, they do say is that if you are going to be on this team, we expect you to model the character of Christ. Mm, and they're yeah. like, well, and he says, well, what if I'm an atheist? He's like, uh, well, Jesus existed. That's you know a thing. You know, the world knows that. Mm. But uh, even if you don't look at him as the son of God or a deity or God in flesh or whatever, if you look at his character and you can model that, um, we want you on our team. Yeah. And so he said, that's been a big open door for just people taking steps in that past. Yeah. Our college students asked if they could invite their friends that weren't members of the church or you know, necessarily Christians. And uh, Jan, my co-leader was just like, yeah, instantly, no hesitation. Like, absolutely. Yes. That is how we should be. We want to be inviting. We want to uh, welcome you. If you're curious about our faith, that is excellent to us. You know what I mean? And, and I love that that's, a, that's his model for the, for the team. I think it should be like that. Acceptance is important. Well, uh, any closing thing, anything you want to tell people if they never hear from you again for the rest <laughs> of their lives, what's your, mm -hmm. uh, what's your fair weather speech? Or not fair weather, fair will speech. Um, oh, gosh. Have courage and be kind from Cinderella. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I think my, my thing is, uh, I, I, like a broken record, take some time off of the internet, pull off the internet, to pull off social media and just uh, say hi to your neighbors, even if it's awkward and weird, or take a phone call from your mom, even if that is awkward and weird. And just uh, take a step back and try not to be combative for the sake of trying. It, it's, it's, it's our instinct to fight and be combative these days or just, or defend. We're always defending. Um, instead, just completely relax in a situation and just hear other humans out. Even if you completely disagree with them and think they're crazy, just begin to talk to other people because the things that they say, no matter how unusual or ridiculous it may seem to you may pop back in your life in a way, and you may derive a lesson from it that you never expected. And so I think, um, the biggest thing we can do is just begin to be a society again. Like the, the, the fabric of society being, being broken, it's broken. It's, it's been disintegrated. It was caught on fire, gasoline or napalm style, and it's gone. <laughs> There's nothing left anymore. We're not going to come out of this as the same society. There's no chance we will. There's just no chance. Our economy's broken. Our so the fabric's broken. Uh, everything is broken right now. But don't let that defeat you because guess what? When it's all broken down like this, it's, there's so much that you can achieve and so much opportunity that comes out of this that the positive, the potential should be overwhelmingly good. You really should try to see things as, well, it can't get any worse. And if it does, stay strong and keep reminding yourself that anything that you want is more possible when the world is resetting. And so I look at this as not so much an opportunity or not so much a woe is me, the world is over. And it may very well be, but I look at it more as a moment for reinvention, a moment to say, I was who I was through that time in my life. And here I am now. And so I think my, the only advice I could give that would, that's worth taking is just to really try to be, be yourself in this weird world, unapologetically, but kind be kind and be who you are. And I think that combination of just keeping kindness, true kindness, not kindness, the way we say the word, oh, that person is so kind. Real kindness is rare. It's more rare than you realize. I witness real kindness in my grandmother's actions every single day. She's truly kind to everyone. And I think that uh, that's Christ-like. And, and maybe try to, again, like you said, even if you aren't a Christian, we should em emulate these things that we've idolized in our society like a Christ-like life. So I think uh, we should all just try to be nicer to each other. That's the truth. Well, so yeah, but thanks for listening if you made it this far because I'm sure I was, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're going to split it into two. It'll be fun. Okay. <laughs> and then well, there's Doug. He's doing great. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for joining with us. And uh, is there any, you know, 
you're telling people to get off the internet, but is it? Well, but it, yeah, I know. I, I'm online though. If you want to say hi, it, I think a healthy uh, balance. That's what I tell people. You don't need to delete. Yes, I understand delete for the data and everything. I get that. I'm with you. You know, strong on it. But uh, if you can't, if you can't get off of it, and it's a taper off thing, just like it is for anything, go ahead and um, try to find things that make you happy and positive. And so, if you want to, it's Jackie Craft on everything, and I try to keep it pretty happy. But you know, there's that. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for being with us today. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed listening and watching this and have a great day. Thanks guys.